Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your 11th Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the generic for loop, and we kind of touched on it in the last video uh, with our classes, but we're going to be going into more depth with it in this video, so let's get started. So the generic for loop is another loop, just like our numeric for and while loops, but it's used for something slightly different. So first let's create a table. And we're going to give it named keys. So we'll say 1 equals 1. Let's have a simple example. 2 equals 2. And 3 equals 3. So now let's write our generic for loop. So the syntax is 4. And then you have your iterator variable or variables. In this case, we'll have 2, k, and v separated by commas. Then you have in. And then you have your iterator function. Now, 99% of the time, you'll use a predefined function in Lua called pairs. And the pairs function allows you to uh, loop through a table that has named keys. So we give the table as a parameter. Then we'll say do and end. So what's going to happen is this pairs function is going to be called, and it's going to return it's going to return a closure, and that closure will loop through this table, and it will return two values one as the key to the function so it'll return one as a string and the other will be the value of the table at uh, the keys position so it will return one in the first loop two in the second and three in the third and then for the keys variable it re will return the words one two and then three and then those values will be set to k for the key and v for the value so if we were to print k comma v and run it we get 2 3 and 1 so notice that that's not in order and that's because tables with named keys don't have any actually no tables have any real order um, even if you give it even if when you declare things in order in the table that order isn't saved and they'll just be saved however I'm not sure how it's decided but uh, it won't be in order most of the time so we get 2 3 and then 1 but it still printed out all of the keys and all of the values in the table. So there is one more function that you may find useful when you're using the generic for loop and it is called iPairs so to show what it does let's get rid of the named keys for this table and now let's see exactly what happens if we try to print out this table using the numeric for loop so say for i equals one size of t do an end and we'll print i and then t at position i so now actually let's just in between this we will print backslash n to separate the outputs so we get one two three and one two three they're exactly the same because we haven't changed the generic for loop so now let's use i pairs. So we'll change this to i pairs and print it again, and we get the exact same thing. So we do get something different if we change one of the values within t to nil. So we'll change position 2 to nil. And now if we run this again, when we use the numeric for loop, we get 1 is 1, 2 is nil, and then 3 is 3, which is correct. It can, the numeric for loop will continue uh, looping and then printing through the table, uh, even if it finds a nil position. But i pairs just prints one and then stops because when i pairs finds a nil value, it assumes that you're done with the table and stops looping through it. So it will only print up to the first nil value in the table because that's what it considers to be the end. And this may be useful for something I've never used it practically, but. Um, you may find it useful, you never know, so it's good to know it. And also there's debate on whether um, this method is faster for printing out a table with non-named keys or the numeric for loop, and uh, really there's no definitive answer to that, just use what you like more. So uh, that is the other function that you may find yourself using with the generic for loop. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create our own function that we can use with the generic for loop. So we'll delete this and just to show the example a bit better, we'll add a few more numbers to our t table. And now the function we're going to be creating is going to be the same as the i pairs function, 
except we're going to be able to choose what position we want to start looping through in the table. So we'll say function, uh, we'll call it numiter, doesn't matter. Uh, and we'll give it two parameters, the table and the start, uh, what position we want to start looping at. So it will end it. And remember this function has to be a closure, so we're just going to create one variable, i equals, uh, i equals, it's not showing up in the autocomplete, start. And then we will return a function, doesn't take any parameters. And what this function is going to do is it's going to increment i first, and then it's going to check whether i at position i or a t at position i minus one, and we say i minus one because we've already incremented i, uh, but we want to use the last um, the last position of i. So we'll say if t at i minus one, then so we're checking if t at i minus one exists, then we return i minus one and t at i minus one. And this is why we're incrementing i at the beginning of the function instead of the end. It's because we'll always be returning a value uh, right after we, well we're always returning a value so if we were to not increment uh, i and then just use t at position i then we'd never have a chance to increment i and we'd be stuck in the same place in the table forever. So we increment i first and then use uh, the last value of i, i minus one to uh, access our table. So if t at i minus 1 exists, then we return i minus 1 and t at i minus 1. And otherwise, so if t at i minus 1 doesn't exist, then we just return nil. And we end this. So once we return nil for the uh, key, so we're, we're actually returning nil and nil because uh, we have two values that will receive the return value here but we don't really need this because it'll automatically be nil. So once the first uh, variable that you have as an iterator variable in your generic for loop, once that becomes nil, the for loop ends. So once we return nil, this for loop will end. So this is our function. So now let's change this to num iter at t and let's start off just starting at position one. And if we run this, we get 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, and 5 and 5. So it worked properly, it printed the keys and the values, and it ended once the table was done. So now let's try starting at position 2. We get 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5, 5. We start at position 3, and we get all the positions starting from 3, and so on. And we could go up to starting at 5, and it would be just 5 and 5. And out of curiosity, if we did 6 we'd get no output. So that's how the function works and that is how you create a function that works with the generic for loop. So that's all for this video. Uh, it was a pretty quick video I think. Uh, I'm not really sure what we're going to do in the next video but uh, I will figure something out before next week so I'll see you then.